map reduce preface content of this lecture we will discuss map reduce paradigm its internal working and its implementation overview we will also see many examples using map reduce and different applications of map reduce and also we will look into the aspects how the scheduling and fault tolerance is done inside the map reduce introduction map reduce is a programming model and is associated implementation for processing and generating large data sets so the large data set we mean that if the data cannot be stored and processed with, within one computer system that is in the range of petabytes size therefore we require a new paradigm that is called map reduce which will enable to process such a large data sets which are useful in today's different applications so here in this simple programming model users have to specify a function which is called a map that processes key value pair to generate a set of intermediate key value pairs which in turn will be taken up by another function which is called a reduce that merges all the intermediate values associated with the same intermediate keys and therefore together map and reduce will work together to basically solve all the many applications in the real world so many real world tasks are expressible in this particular model now programs written in this functional style are automatically parallelized and executed on a large cluster of commodity machines the runtime system takes care of details of partitioning the input data scheduling the programs execution across the set of machine handling machine failures managing the required inter machine communication that is all will be made, made abstraction from the programmers so this allows the programmers without having any experience with the parallel and distributed system to easily utilize these resources for solving the problem which comprises of a large data set a typical map reduce computation processes many terabytes of data on thousands of machines so that is the scale on which this map reduce computation can work hundreds of map reduce programs have been implemented and upwards of 1000 of map reduce jobs are executed on google's cluster every day this map reduce internally uses a distributed file system which is known as hdfs and there are certain components which will be useful in the design so we will discuss this hdfs in a separate lecture but for this point of discussion at this point of time we will understand that the distributed file system has the master node which is also known as the name node in hdfs and this stores the metadata and these may be replicated as per different file system and here we are using the hdfs file system there are some client libraries for the file accesses so they will talk to the master to find out the available chunk servers which connects directly to the chunk server to access the data so chunk servers are the servers who manages the splits into the contiguous chunks and each chunk is of the size 16 to 64 mb and these chunks are replicated normally by default it is three times replicated in hdfs file system this replication is also ensures that these replication also goes into different racks so that it will become a rack tolerant rack fault tolerant system it can 
build up in this process of replication. So, let us see the motivation of using the MapReduce for large scale data processing. So, to handle this scale of data processing, we require thousands of CPUs and also we do not want the hassle of managing such a large system. Therefore, the MapReduce is a programming model and its architecture will provide automatic parallelization and the distribution, the fault tolerance and IO scheduling, monitoring and status updates. We will see there more details in further slides. So, MapReduce paradigm, let us understand from the scratch about this paradigm. These terms map and reduce, they are borrowed from the functional language which is called a Lisp. So, for example, the map function which is there in the Lisp, if it is having the operation or a function called a square and a list is given then this particular function will be applied on each and every element of this particular list. Now, this particular function can be executed in parallel. Why? Because this particular function, if it is applied on these input values, they can be able to generate the output. That is the square of 1 is 1, square of 2 is 4, 3 is 9, 4 is 16. So, if 4 different machines are involved or 4 different threads are executing this is square at 4 different elements. So, in one go it will be able to generate this. So, that is how the inherent parallelism is being exploited here in the functional languages and that is how the map reduce will also do the same way without botheration of internally how this parallel programming is to be done by the programmer end. Similarly, there will be a reduce function. So, in the reduce function, there is an operation that is the function which is defined. So, function is a plus which involves all the elements which are to be added and given the output. So, internally it will be uh, represented in this particular equation form and two operators at a time because plus is a binary operation, two at a time this will form a complete expression and this will be evaluated to give the output 30. So, these map and reduce functions which are there in functional language like Lisp, it is being inspired and it is not that map and reduce of list function, but it is a separate construct which is called a map reduce which is now available to solve this kind of problem. So, the problems of application for example, a large document, large data set for example, it is a dump of a Wikipedia and here you want to find out the word Shakespeare or some other keyword and you want to list the count for each of these words in a given document therein. If that is the application, then a map reduce construct will be very easy and its program is called a word count. So, let us see how the word count program will work wherein we can submit a huge data set and using the word count program of MapReduce, it can be able to solve. So, now in the MapReduce, there are two functions map and reduce. So, out of them, the map function let us discuss first. So, the process individual record to generate the intermediate key value pairs. So, take this snapshot of the entire big document, let us say it has four different words in this particular sentence that is welcome everyone, hello everyone. 
Now, this particular document when it is given as the input, then this map function should be able to generate the key value pairs. So, key means every keyword it will generate and its count it will emit in the map that value of 1. So, for every word it will emit a uh, one count. Similarly, hello also will emit one count and everyone is appearing again. So, it will be generating that particular count. So, that is the function of map. So, map will produce this as an output. So, when map is given this particular file name it will generate this particular output that is in the form of a key value pair. Now, this particular map function will process these individual records to generate the intermediate key value pairs that is what we have shown. Now, this particular task can be executed by two different map tasks or we can divide this file into two different two different chunks or we can call them as a splits so there are two splits and we intend to execute in parallel so that this particular document can be processed a uh, big size document can be processed. So, in that process these particular splits are given to different servers they are called as a map task 1 and the other one is called map task 2. So, this particular input is given to the map task 1 and this map will generate the intermediate key value pairs they are called intermediate key value pairs. So, also the map task 2 also will do the same thing. These intermediate key value pairs will now be given as the input to the next phase which is called reduce phase. So, for reduce phase the output of the map phase will become the input. So, the parallelly processing a large number of individual records to generate the intermediate key value pair is basically inherent in this paradigm that is called map using the map tasks. Then this particular output of map phase is given to the reducer that is the key value pairs are given this is called intermediate key value pairs key value pairs are given to the reduce function. So, reduce processes and merges all the intermediate values associated per key together in this phase. So, here you can see that every one is appearing twice. So, they should be merged in the reduce phase and therefore, it will give the final output associated with every key. So, let us see when this happens using the reduce function what it does it combines or it merges these two keywords and it will generate the combined values. Similarly, hello is appearing only once and welcome is also appearing once. Now, to merge these different keys which are having the same keys they have to be merged together in the reducer phase. So, they have to be given to the same reducer. And this hello keyword may be given 
to the separate reducer. Now there are requirements of three different reducers, but if you have only two machines available which can be assigned to these reducers, so a particular machine can handle two different or more than one different reducers also. So let us see the details of this reduce function. So each key will be assigned to one reduce, to one reducer or to one reduce task. So parallelly they will be processed and it will merge all the intermediate values associated of the same key to one reducer by partitioning these particular keys. So here in this case you can see the partitioning of these keys are basically able to map to reducers which you have here shown in this example. So for example map 1 will go to the reduce task 2, everyone will go to reduce task 1, hello will go to reduce task 2 and everyone will go to the reduce task 1 and reduce task 1 will then combine these two everyone into that combined function that is it will aggregate. Now this kind of partitioning of the keys to the reduced task can be done using hash partitioning. So using hash partitioning we can hash a particular key and this particular key when it is hashed then it will be taken the modulo of the number of reduced task. In this manner this particular keys will be partitioned equally across all the reduce, reduce task. So there will be a proper load balancing of these keywords which are assigned to this reduce function. So let us see the programming model in more detail of this map reduce. So the computation takes a set of input key and values pairs and produces a set of output key value pairs. So the users they have to use the map reduce library to express their computations using these two functions. The map abstraction, the map written by the user takes the input pairs pair and produces a set of intermediate key value pairs. Map reduce library uh, groups together all intermediate key values associated with that intermediate key and passes them to the reduce function. Reduce abstraction reduce function is also written by the user accepts the intermediate keys which are generated from the previous phase that is from the map phase and the set of values for that it merges together these values to form a possibly a smaller set of values. Typically 0 or 1 output value is produced per reduce invocation the intermediate values are supported to the users reduce functions via an iterator. This allows us to handle the list of values that are too large to be fit in the memory. Let us see through an example of a word count. Here the map function will take the key values and key is nothing but the name of the document and value is the text of that particular document. So when given this particular document, the name of a document. and this is the text of a document or the entire document is given as a value then for each word which are separated by either the blanks or other separator. So each word will be identified in uh, the document or in the value of that is called the document and it will emit that word w with the value 1 in the word count program. Similarly, this output will be now taken up by the reducer. Now here the key is a word and the values are the values which are being generated over here. So values and iterator 
we will count these values. So, let us begin this process with initialization of result is equal to 0. So, for each count v in these particular values, the result will be incremented by that value and it will emit for every key this corresponding result and that will be output from this map reduce function. So, in general input will be a set of key value pairs that we have already seen and the user has to specify its own application through the map function which will emit a list of intermediate key value pairs are now given as the input to the reduce function which will generate the output that is the values of all keys. So, output will be that keys and the final values which will be generated by the reduce function and so let us see some of the applications. The applications of this map reduce paradigms are many, some of them we will here list them to understand the details of these applications. So, distributed grep application that means distributed grep can be applied on the log files or an error files wherein we can check or we can find out that pattern and find out that what kind of error it is incurring. So, since the log files are too big therefore, this distributed grep is an ideal application. Similarly, the count of URL access frequency is also one of the important application and the list of URLs are being generated by any proxy server or in the cloud who is running the websites. So, how many such accesses are being made across different websites accesses by the user. So, their total count also becomes a map reduce application. Similarly, a reverse web link graph that means a map that means we want to find out the, the graph of those websites and who are accessing those websites. So, that is called link graph. So, we want to find out the reverse web link graph means to that website how many people they are accessing it. So, if we want to know that that is that application is called reverse web link graph. Similarly, term vector per host, a term vector summarizes the important words that occur in a document or a set of documents as the list of words and their frequency which is called a term vector per host. So, this particular application can also be programmed using MapReduce inverted index that is the map function parses each document and emit a sequence of words. So, the reduce function accepts all pair of the given words and sorts the corresponding document id and emits the word. So, the set of all output pairs forms an inverted index and it is easy to augment this computation to keep track of word position. Similarly, distributed sort that is the sorting algorithm on a large scale is called distributed sort. So, let us see some of the use of map reduce in these applications. So, distributed graph here the input is a large set of files and the output is the lines into the file that matches that particular given pattern. So, map will emit a line if that pattern is matches the supplied pattern and reduce will copy the intermediate data to the output. So, this can be written using a simple program like word count. Another application is called reverse web link graph, here the input is the web graph in the form of a triples a b where the page a will basically accessing or having a link to the page b. Now, given this particular input the output for each page is the list of pages that link to it. To do this the map function what it will do it will process this particular web log for each input and it outputs the reverse of that that is the target and the source. Then reducer 
will collect the target and form the list of source. Let us take an example. Let us see a graph A, B and C. So, here in this particular graph there are three nodes A, B, C or let us say there are three pages A, B, C. A is now referring to B or accessing to B and B is accessing to A and A is accessing to C. So, the list of pages here it will be in the form of A, B then, then B, C then C, A and then B A. Now, the task is to find out for example, in A how many links are being accessed. So, here it is showing there are two links. So, let us see how using MapReduce we can do this. So, this will be the input, this value will be the input, this is the key and this is the value this will be input to the map function. So, the map function will be given this input. Now, the map will emit value comma key. So, that means, it will emit this particular output. Let us say here, it is given as source and target. This is called source and this is called target. So, this will be given as the value to this particular thing. Now, this will emit the target comma source. So, map reduce output will emit B comma A, it will output C comma B, it will output A comma C, it will output A comma B. Then this particular output will be now fed to the reducer, reducer will now generate based on the key as the target, it will find out the list of source. So, this particular key for example, A will be combined and the list will be generated for A C comma B, this will be list. For C, there will be list called B and for B, the list will be A, this will be generated out of the reducer. So, here we can see the node A is having two links pointed one by B and the other by C. So, using MapReduce program, we can easily write down the map and reduce function, which is very small program, but here we have to know the tricks to solve these particular problems. And when a big program or a big file is given, it will be able to generate these values. Now, let us see another MapReduce program to count URL access frequency. Now, here the input is a log of accessed URLs from the proxy server and output will be the each URL and the percentage of total accesses for that URL. So, this will be a bit difficult. Let us see the details how we can write down a program for this particular application of URL access frequency. So, here first what we will do is that map function will process the web log and output URL with a value 1. So, that means all the URLs will be given to the map function. URLs will be given there is the input and what it will emit here is URL and 1. That means, for every URL it will emit 1. 
Now the next phase comprises of multiple reducers. So the first phase what it will do? It will take it will take this particular output now reducer number 1 it will take this output url 1 and then it will it will count the total urls that is it will generate a reducer 1 comma url and the count so with one and all the output whatever is generated so that means it will generate the total number of urls present so it will generate the total values of url present now then another reducer will be basically done in the second pass which will count the percentage of the url in the form that this particular reducer will take the urls which are omitted by the map function and for every url count whatever is output by the reducer in this particular phase it will divide by the overall count whatever is calculated in the previous pass of the reducer therefore with one map function and two times application of a reducer function we will be able to calculate the count of url access frequency So, this particular application has shown that it is possible to cascade multiple map reduce job to solve an application. Now, let us see another application here in this application it will do the sorting. Now, the sorting using map reduce that means if a very big file is given how are you going to sort using map reduce is the task. Now, here the map task outputs their result that is intermediate results in a sorted form that is using the quick sort already is implemented inside the map reduce inside the map function. Similarly, the reduce task also input in the form of sorted manner that is also done using some sorting algorithm for example, using merge sort. So, using these information let us see how the sorting can be done using map reduce in a very simple manner. So, let us see that if the input is given to the map, so it will generate that particular value which is output from the map function and the second one that is the value of will be any value that is not that important. So, you know that these particular values are already sorted. So, the map will generate these particular keys in a sorted order. Then as far as the reducer is concerned this as a input of this map function and it will generate the same value again. The only thing we have to do is that in the partitioning we have to provide the range instead of hash function because hashing will randomize them since the output of the map function is already in the form of sorted we do not want to disturb it. So, that we have to provide the range values the range of keys. So, range of keys means 
the reduced task will be assigned according to the ranges so that these particular range will not be disturbed and the output of this map function will be preserved which is in the sorted list and the output will be sorted. So, this particular example or application of MapReduce could make this sorting algorithm easy why because it has exploited the way map function is giving the output it is in the sorted order. So, we have to just preserve that sorted order without being disturbed by the partitioning function. So, that the entire file will be in a sorted order output. Now, let us see the map reduce scheduling how it is done. Now, as far as programming of a map reduce is concerned externally for the user we has to only write down the map program this is very short programs and they have to specify the map and reduce function and submit the job and wait for the result. The users need not have to know the details of parallel and distributed concepts and the programming. As far as everything is done internally, so for internally for the paradigm and the scheduler has to build everything and give the output. So, it has to parallelize the map function execution that means, it will transfer the data from map to the reduce that is done by the shuffling that we have seen earlier that a partitioning and shuffling using hash function was being carried out. Then parallelize the reduce function and implement the storage for map input, map output, reduce input and reduce output. One thing is there that we have to ensure that no reducer starts before all the maps are finished that is being done inside map reduce. So, this ensures that a barrier between the map phase and a reduce phase is there. So, barrier in the sense this is called a barrier, barrier is nothing but a synchronization. So, when all the map function will finish, some are finishing early, some are finishing quite late. So, earlier who so finish they have to wait till all the map function completes their execution, then only the next phase called reducer phase will begin afterwards. So, this is called a barrier. In some of the implementations, these barriers can, can also be in some cases being asynchronized that means, they are not synchronizing may be the next phase without completing all the reduce phase the next phase can begin. So, inside the map reduce we have seen that parallelize map is quite easy now. Why? Because each task in the map they are all independent. So, they can parallelly execute inside a cloud. To transfer the data from map to reduce a shuffle function is to be called and all map output with the same key is assigned to the same reduce job and this requires to use the partitioning function which is hash based partitioning. So, that it will be uniformly distributed across all the servers which are running the reduce task. Third step is to parallelize the reduce is quite easy why because reduce is independent of each other implement the storage for the map input map output reduce input reduce output. So, here we can see that the map input is done from the distributed file system map output also uses the local file system and reduce input also from multiple remote disk using the local file system and reduce output no is done through the distributed file system. Distributed file systems which are used here in the map reduce are either the Google file system or 
Hadoop distributed file system. Let us see the internal working of the MapReduce. So first thing is whenever the input file is given, so this particular input file is splits, it is divided into different splits, seven different splits are shown over here, each and every split is given to different map tasks. Now these map tasks are to be assigned a servers or the machines. So for example, here it is shown that two different map tasks are assigned to one server A, three different map tasks are assigned to the server B and two map tasks are assigned to the server C. So it depends upon how many servers are there these map tasks will be assigned. Similarly, the output of these servers will be shuffled that means they will be grouped by the keys and will be given to the reducer functions. So here this example shows that there are three different reduce task is being identified over here and these reduce task will be assigned to different servers. So there are three different servers assigned to the reduce task which will be executing these reducers. At the output of these particular servers are stored in a file in a distributed file system which are given different names or there may be there could be only one file also it depends upon. Now who allocates, who assigns these map tasks to the servers and the reduced task also to the different servers may be the same servers. So it is the resource manager, <coughs> it is the resource manager of a distributed file system or a YAN server that we will see scheduler which will basically internally does this. Let us see the YARN scheduler which is combined with the Hadoop 2.0 versions onwards. So YARN full form is yet another resource negotiator. So this particular YARN will treat each server as a collection of container. So it, it means that if the server is having some number of cores let us say 3 and it is having 3 GB of internal memory. So that means one core and one GB will form one container. So it has now three containers. So three different tasks can be assigned in this manner. So this yarn scheduler has three different components. The use of one component we have seen in the previous slide that is called resource manager which assigns these containers to the different tasks that is to the map task and to the reduce task. So that is called scheduling. So this there is a global resource manager which performs the scheduling of these particular task map and reduce task to these particular machines or the servers or to the container here in this terminology. Then another component of yarn is called the node manager. So for every server there is a daemon process called node manager which basically will manage all the server related functions. So that means a server if it is giving three different containers so the node manager will manage it. Then per application there is a application manager, application master. So for every application there is application master and this particular application master will negotiate with the resource manager and the node manager for allocating their tasks to the machines. Also the application master is responsible to deal with the task failures at the time of execution of the job. Let us see how the yarn will get a job of a container. So here there is a resource manager and this is the example which is shown that there are two nodes, node A and node B. So the node A is having its manager, node A manager and node manager B will manage this server node B. So there is a 
resource manager which will manage all the nodes which are available in this scenario that is through the yarn. Now, for there are two applications, two jobs, job 1 and job 2. So, there are two different application master, they will manage these two tasks. Now, let us see the example of these interactions with the resource manager. Now, let us assume that the application master 2, its task that is application 2 task is completed. Therefore, this will return back through the node manager that it is free. Similarly, the application 1 master negotiates with the resource manager asking for a container. Now, since this container is available, why? Because node B has completed its task. So, that particular container is now free. So, it will be assigned back to the master 1 and it will start the task execution. So, this particular interaction of different resource manager, the node manager and the application master, they will ensure that the resources which are required to execute the applications are done. Let us see the fault tolerance which is handled in MapReduce. So, MapReduce handles different kind of faults at different level. For example, whenever there is a server failure, so this will affect the name, name node and resource manager name manager, resource manager and application manager will be affected in this particular scenario whenever there is a server failure. Similarly, whenever there is a resource manager failure, then basically it, it uses the secondary resource manager to, to fail over and start working it. These are detected using the heartbeats which are contained in the request and also avoid. There is a possibility of slow servers called stragglers. So, the slowest task will slow down the entire job that we have already seen because it is using the barriers concept. So, slow servers are due to the bad disk network bandwidth, CPU, memory, there can be many different issues. So, it has to keep track of the progress of the task and performs the backup that is the replicated execution of staggered task which is called as a speculative execution. Locality that means that the cloud has the hierarchical topology of a data center that is the servers racks and different racks are connected through the top of rack switch. So, the locality has to be exploited that means, MapReduce will try to attempt to assign the server for a particular task which is very close to it. So, that the network delay can be avoided here in this case. So, let us see some of the implementation of MapReduce. There are many implementation of MapReduce and interface and interfaces are available. So, let us see one such example here where we assume that the machines are dual processor, commodity networks, hardware is available and the clusters consist of hundreds and thousands of machine is there and storage is also provided and user can submit the job to this kind of system. Let us see the distributed execution of this map reduce invocation. So, here we can see that the user program user can submit their job in this particular manner and this particular user also gives the splits that is the input file is divided into different splits and these particular user program that is the map phase will generate different workers and these workers are assigned to the different uh, machines and when these splits are given to the worker, they will output 
and they will write down on the intermediate files on the disk using some distributed file system. Now the next task is that these particular intermediate output is given to the input to the next phase that is to the reducer phase and this reducer phase that is called worker will be assigned by the user program that is through the master. Now then these particular workers are assigned the servers in the reduce phase and they will output through the to the output file in the distributed file system. So this is the typical scenario of a distributed execution. Now here we can see the sequence of actions in this distributed execution. So the program calls the map reduce function and the sequence of actions which we have told is being listed over here. For example, map reduce library will split the user file into different pieces of 16 MB to 64 MB and then these one of these copies is called one of the program copies is called a master and the rest are it will generate the different worker process and these workers are assigned the map task and into the end each split will be assigned to these workers and periodically they are being buffered and partitioned. These reduce and these particular intermediate results will be stored in the file system. Now the reducer worker is notified by the master and this particular output intermediate output of the previous stage will be given as the input and it will be reducer phase will give the output. So here the master data structure is like this that it basically has different states and it will trace through different states internally in the execution. Fault tolerance we have already covered, locality is being exploited, task clarity we have assumed, partition function we have covered and ordering guarantees is also there that we have used, we have shown in the sorting application and this is a combined function. So MapReduce more examples uh, are available, this word count we have already done. Now the counting words of different length if we want to find out then what we will do is given a particular input that is then we will return its length and that particular word also. So it we will return the length and the word both will be emit in the map function. So if that is the case then for example all these particular words first their length and their words will be written and then the reducer function will combine them using that particular key that is the length of the words. And in this case for every length of word every length different keywords will be combined in the form of a list and this shows that the word that is having the length 3 there are 3 different words and length 4 there are 3 different words, length 5 there are 2 different and eight, length 8 there are 2 different words. So here we have counted the words of different length. Another example is to find a common friends, list of common friends. So here every input is every person will provide a list of their friends. So A, B, C, D, E they have provided their own list of friends. If this is the input given to the map function, map function will output for every such list it will give a pair that is A, B uh, will list out this particular list of friends and A, C will list out friends and similarly A, D. Similarly the person number B will give its list and this also will be emitted in this particular format. So when all these list are output then as far as the reducer is concerned what reducer will do? Reducer will now for every keyword 
which is there and the list which is basically available in the intermediate they will take the intersection intersection of these particular list of common friends so intersection will find out the list of common friends and that will be output so this is the result which is shown who are here so using MapReduce all these particular program become simple but writing or thinking about this program is not so trivial more details of this MapReduce you can refer to this particular paper by Jeffrey Dean and Sanjay Gamewatt that is the MapReduce simplified data processing on large clusters so conclusion MapReduce programming model has been successfully used in the Google and many different purposes. So, we have seen that for a large size data set this particular simple pro programming paradigm we have also seen the internal details we have also shown how it is automatically dealing with the parallelization and dealing with the failures. There are many ongoing research work happening in the in the scheduling fault tolerance in the scenarios of MapReduce and Hadoop. Thank you.